word you have heard somebody saying this one is going to be preeminent and this one is going to overshadow it's going to overwhelm it's going to swallow up it's going to throw away every other word you heard in your life in jesus name it says saying go show thyself unto ahab show thyself unto Ahab. Let me stop there for a moment. Anytime a prophet comes before you and shows up before you, something will happen. Everywhere Elijah went, show thyself. Anywhere you went, have you noticed? He showed up at the brook and then the ravens came and they brought food and showed up in the house of that in the house of that a widow that was gathering sick so that i will eat this and die anywhere he showed up miracles showed up and now show yourself to ahab the king of the land and the king of the nation and now a miracle for the whole of israel a miracle for the whole of your family and here is the promise of the lord i will send rain upon the earth unconditional this one will be fulfilled this one will happen in your house you are going to see the refreshing of that rain in your life you'll see the refreshing of that rain because it says i will send rain upon the earth the drought will be over. god is not god is not a man the god who told elijah go show yourself unto ahab because i'm going to bring rain unto the land it's not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent he doesn't change his mind if he says he'll save you he'll not change his mind if he says he will heal you he'll not change his mind if he says he will supply all your need he will not change his mind if he says he's going to wipe your tears away he will not change his mind if he says refreshing and favor is coming upon your life tonight he will not change his mind it will be done i said it will be done because god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent as he said and shall he not do it as he said and shall he not do it or as he spoke in and shall he not make it good the word of god will be made good in your life today fulfilled performed done is coming upon your life psalm 105 and verse 42 psalm 105 reading from verse 42 for he remembered his holy promise and abraham his servant he remembered his holy promise you see when a word comes out of the mouth of god is the holy word it's a holy promise. It's a holy prophecy. It's a holy declaration. And when it is holy, you cannot take anything away from that. It's coming from the mouth of the Almighty. And then it says, He remembered Abraham, his servant. And you must remember that now he remembers Jesus, his son. I said, Remember Jesus, his son. When Jesus said on the cross of Calvary, it is finished. God must always remember that. And God will always remember that. Your sorrow finished. Penalty finished. Condemnation finished. All the load upon your life, everything finished. Because it is the holy promise of the Lord. And he must and he will always remember jesus christ is only begotten son look at verse 43 there in verse 43 and he brought forth his people with joy and he's bringing you out tonight with joy and he's chosen with gladness he gave them the lands of the heathen and they inherited the labor of the people that they might observe his statutes 
it prepares us for obedience it prepares us for obeying the statutes of the lord and keep his laws somebody there tell me the last line tell me what you are going to say after the prayer tonight tell me what's going to happen in the bus in the car while you are going back tonight tell me tonight before you sleep what will come out of your heart you will praise the lord you will praise the lord you'll praise the lord because abundance is coming upon your life the promises of god are coming upon your life tonight i want you to look at second peter chapter one second peter chapter one and we're reading from verse three second peter chapter one verse three according as his divine power that's how that's how he blesses people he blesses people according to his power not according to your own weakness not according to your own limitation but he blesses people according to the divine power he has given unto us he has given unto he has given unto he has given unto me he has given unto you how many things has he given you you are going to claim them tonight spiritual blessing you are going to have tonight material blessing you are going to have tonight healing for every cell of your body you are going to have tonight from the top of your head to the tip of your toe health healing strength in jesus name total rest and peace of mind you will sleep well nothing will disturb your sleep all those bad bad things uh, you know blowing there and blowing there walking there they're taking away tonight because according to his mighty power divine power he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue whereby are given unto whereby are given unto given unto you given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers no onlooker tonight ye might be partakers there's no spectator tonight ye might be partakers there is nobody in the corner saying they are getting it i never uh, uh, don't finish that sentence you are partakers tonight in jesus name that he might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. what a tissue you have if the almighty gives you a promise and what disposition of mind should you have when the almighty gives you a promise i'm coming to romans chapter 4 romans chapter 4 and here we're reading from verse 18 Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope. Anything that was hopeless before, turn around now, there's hope tonight. Don't frown anymore. Let your face show that you're hopeful in the Lord. There's hope for you tonight. I said there is hope for you tonight. It says that she might be calm that she might become to become means you're living where you were and you are becoming somebody new somebody different i said you will become that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith why oh, because he knew that the almighty cannot lie and being not weak in faith why because he knew the one that created the whole earth out of nothing can recreate his own body that appeared to be dead now and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of sarah's womb Think about that. Hundred years of age. And, and many of us are not up to that age yet. If he did it for him at a hundred years of age, he'll do it for you at 53. He'll do it for you at 60. He'll do it for you at 90. 
In fact, if you go beyond 100, he'll do it for you at 120. Because now it says they staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Those who stagger, they're like, uh, they have drunk, uh, you know, some wine. And because of that, they're staggering. No, we have not drunk wine. We have the word of God. We have the mind of Christ. And we have the promises that cannot fail. And therefore, we will not stagger at the promise of God. Through unbelief, but was strong in faith. What was he doing? He was strong in faith. What was he doing? Giving glory to God and being how persuaded? How are you persuaded tonight? I said, are you persuaded tonight? It says, be fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Tonight, able. I said, tonight, the Almighty is still able. He says, I am God, and I change not. And you know, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Something good is going to happen in your life today. We're coming back now, coming back now to First Kings chapter 18, point number two now. The preparation for abundance. The preparation for abundance. I want you to look at uh, chapter 18 of First Kings. I'm reading from verse 2. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab. Look at that. Look at that. That's the preparation. Because the Lord had said, Go, show thyself unto Ahab. There had not been rain for these three and a half years. And God said, I'm bringing rain. And he says, Now go and show yourself unto Ahab. There was no doubt in his mind, What if I get to Ahab? I make the announcement and then nothing happens of course something must happen i said something must happen what if we pray and then we say god is going to do it what if nothing happens don't talk about that something is going to happen in your life something is going to happen a miracle is coming something is going to happen and so it says uh, elijah went to show himself unto Ahab. And there was a soft farming in Samaria, verse 3, and Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly, for it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave, and he fed them with bread and water. Thank God for a person like Obadiah. And thank God for a person like you. That where you are walking, if they are opposed to God, opposed to the people of God, you will single yourself out. While Jezebel was killing uh, those prophets, Obadiah gathered those ones he could find together and hid them in a cave and was feeding them morning and evening. Look at verse 6, and, and Ahab said to Obadiah, go into the land, unto all the fountains of water, and unto all the brooks, peradventure, we may find grass to save the horses and the mules alive, that we lose not all the coast. So they divided the land between them uh, to pass uh, throughout it. And Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him. Elijah met him. Elijah met him. The prophet will meet you. He'll meet you with a message. And when the message comes to you, it will take effect in your life in Jesus' name. And he knew him. And he fell on his face and said, Art thou that my Lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. 
look up here look up here behold elijah is here you know he could have been afraid because you know three and a half years now there have been no rain and even the king left the throne and they were searching for water even for the animals and he said i'll go there and then you better go the other way but elijah was not afraid he said go tell your master elijah is here i pray that the spirit of elijah will come upon you the boldness of elijah will come upon you the courage of Elijah will come upon you. You'll not be walking with your heads down. What's the matter with you? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I say greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Stand up straight. And then square your shoulders. And look at Obadiah. And announce, I'm going to see Ahab today. And when you see Ahab, miracle will happen yeah. and then look at verse 9 and he said what have i seen that thou wouldest de deliver thy servant into the hand of ahab to slay me as the lord thy god liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my lord that he is ahab has not sent to seek thee and when they said he is not there well to start with Elijah was around somewhere. He was at the brook. There wasn't any kind of castle there. There wasn't any coffee there. He was right in the open there. And yet Ahab searching for him with all the people he could send to search. They never discovered where Elijah was. They will not discover where you are. They will not see your house. They will not see you to hurt you. Your life is secured in the hand of the Almighty God. And then he came to the house of um, to the house of the widow. And over there, there wasn't he, that woman was just a widow woman, and there wasn't mighty great security there, and there were nobody got there for him, and yet Ahab never saw him. How do you think that those people will ever see you? I said, How do you think those people will ever see you? Your life is secured. Your family is secured. Your business secured. They will not bring you down. I said they will not bring you down. And when they said he's not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. And now thou sayest, go tell thy lord behold elijah is here look at verse 12 and it shall come to pass as soon as i am gone from thee that the spirit of the lord shall carry thee whither i know not look at this elijah did not know this himself that he will not die that the spirit of the Lord will come and take him like a preview of the rapture and take him away. Elijah did not even know that. And somebody called Obadiah already prophesied. On your life, your enemies will prophesy. The people you think, well, he doesn't like me, he's working with King Ahab, he's working with this and working with that. They cannot say anything negative about you. Any negative thing they said, all that one will go down the drain. But then there's going to be a mighty prophecy coming from their mouth. It will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. And then he said, so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me for thy servant fear the lord from my youth and then he began to tell elijah how he feared the lord but look at verse 15 and elijah said as the lord of hosts liveth before whom i stand i will surely show myself unto him when today today are you ready for today I said, are you ready for today? Something must happen today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, 
Ahab and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Are thou he that troubles Israel? Well, come to verse 21. And in verse 21, and Elijah came unto all the people. You know what had happened? Elijah said, don't say that. You are the one troubling Israel, but go and gather. He gave him a command. He gave Ahab the king. He gave him a command. Go and gather all the people together. And Ahab now ran errands for Elijah. They will run errands for you. I said they will run errands for you. Get ready. The word of authority will come out of your mouth. The word of power will come from your mouth. And then Elijah came to all the people and said, How long hold ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. You know what Elijah was telling them? Was telling them, you say that you serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And here you are, you're serving Baal. How are you halting between two opinions? One side, you go to God. The other side, you go to Baal. He was telling them what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, reading from verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. That's the message he was giving them. And that's the message we still have today. We cannot serve God and mammon. We decide for Christ wholeheartedly and fully, entirely today, in Jesus' name. We will not be halting between two opinions. And then uh, Elijah gave them a test. Okay, all these uh, prophets of Baal come to one side. And they were in their hundreds. And Elijah was just one. Uh, sometimes they said, you know, they said if you're in the majority, uh, then you are going to carry the vote. But Elijah, alone with God, he was in the majority. Anywhere you go, you're on the Lord's side, you're the majority. Even if the others are up to their hundreds, you're still in the majority in Jesus' name. Come back, come back to chapter 18 of first, uh, of first Kings. Chapter 18 of First Kings. I'm reading here from verse 22. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's uh, prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks. And let them choose the one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire on them. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire on them. And call ye on the name of your gods in the plural, many, many gods, idols, and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God that answereth by fire and the God that answereth by fire let him be God and all the people answered and said it is well spoken your God will answer by fire look at Vastachi eventually all those people they tried they cried they caught themselves Nothing happened. Their gods were deaf, dumb, and dead. Idols. Nothing happened. And there are some believers, they fear those prophets of Baal. They fear those people that are worshipping idols. They fear those people that are worshipping wood and stone. And those gods can neither do good nor evil. But our God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. I said that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Let's see now in verse 30. 
And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. He wasn't trembling. He wasn't fretting. He wasn't worried. He wasn't anxious. He knew something was going to happen. You are not fretting tonight. You are not worried tonight. You are not anxious tonight. You know something is going to happen. Am I talking your mind? Look at verse 31. And Elijah took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as will contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, all alone by himself, all alone by himself. God will make you a reformer. God will make you a revivalist. God will make you a repairer. And then it says, and cut the bullocks in pieces, and laid him on the wood, and said, fill four barrels with water, and pour it on the bone sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time. And he did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And he did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar and filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. This is a good evening. And this is your evening that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known when. Let it be known, I said, when. This day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me that these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. Then, he was still praying, then at the close of that prayer, then immediately after, today the Lord will answer speedily. The Lord will grant you the request of your heart immediately tonight in Jesus' name. <laughs> then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, people will see the miracle upon you tonight. <laughs> When all the people saw it, they will see that healing tonight. They will see that manifestation tonight. They will see that power tonight. They fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Tonight is that night. The night of manifestation. The night of power. The Lord has sent us and he said, oh, you go. And as you go, there will be manifestation of favor in your life in Jesus' name. But we're looking for the rain. We're waiting for the rain. We're waiting for a rain of miracles. A rain of power. A rain of refreshing. A rain of revival. And that rain is about to fall now. I said that train is about to fall now. Point number three, the prayer with assurance. The prayer with assurance. We're coming to 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. He had not even prayed for the rain yet, but he had assurance. We have not even started prayer yet, but you have assurance. Assurance, there's a performance tonight. Assurance, there's a miracle tonight. 
assurance that the abundance is coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 42. Let me come back to that verse 41. Elijah said unto Elisha, Get thee up. Tell me. Get thee up, say it aloud. Eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Look at verse 42. And Ahab went up. Tell me. And Ahab went up. Tell me out aloud. He believed, he believed. He said, this Elijah, I thought he was my enemy. You are not my enemy anymore. Tell me anything to do, I will do. Because he saw the power. That man prayed and fire came from heaven. And now he's telling us that rain is going to come. He believed. Ahab will not have greater faith than you have. Ahab will not have greater understanding of the miracle working power than you have in Jesus' name. Look at Ahab taking in the word, accepting the word, and knowing it was going to be done. And so Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth. And he put his face between his knees. Was actually praying that was his posture. And said unto his servant, go up now and look toward the sea. And he went, that's the servant. And he looked and said, tell me. Tonight, is there going to be anything? Are you going to be like this servant? He said, there is nothing. And he said, go again. You must see something. I said you must see something. Uh, the promises of God are yes and amen. You must see something. God is still the same. He has not changed. You must see something. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You must see something. Your conscience is telling you, your heart is telling you something is going to happen. You must see something. The windows of heaven are opened unto you. You must see something. The God who cannot lie and the God who said, go show yourself unto Ahab and bring in abundance of rain. He has not lied. He is going to do it. You must see something. And he said, go again. Second time, third time, fourth time. Elijah kept on saying, I have prayed. You must see something. We are praying tonight and you must see something. I will see. What are you? I will see. I said, what are you? I will see. Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea. A little cloud. But you know, we're waiting for abundance. Abundance of rain. And he saw a little cloud. That's just the beginning. That scene will expand. That scene will multiply. That scene will grow. He said, I see it and it's like a man's hand. And he said, go up and say to Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in my life. And it came to pass in your life tonight. And it came to pass in your family tonight. And it came to pass on that uh, child in the hospital tonight. And it came to pass on that neighbor you are concerned about tonight. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. And there was... And there was... And there was a great rain. James chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 17. James chapter 5. Reading from verse 17. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth, but the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. 
and he prayed again and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit we're praying tonight and the heavens will give rain luke chapter 18 luke chapter 18 verse 7 and shall not god avenge his own elect which cried day and night unto him though he be along with them i tell you that he will avenge them speedily tonight speedily tonight speedily <laughs> hebrews chapter 10 hebrews chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 36 hebrews chapter 10 reading from verse 36 it says for we have need of patience that after ye have done the will of god ye might receive the promise somebody is receiving the promise tonight for yet a little while for yet a little while he that shall come will come and will not tarry and will not tarry he will come he'll visit you tonight he will do it tonight matthew chapter 7 reading from verse 7 matthew chapter 7 we're looking at verse 7 ask what will happen it shall be given unto you ask i say what will happen when will it be given to you now ask and it shall be given unto you seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you for for is he going to answer you tonight will he do it for you tonight for everyone that asketh receiveth those are the words of jesus and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be open verse 11 if ye been evil nor to give good gifts unto your children how much more how much more how much more shall your heavenly father your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him tonight is the night answered prayer tonight marvelous answers tonight miracles upon your life tonight first thessalonians chapter 5 first thessalonians chapter 5 reading from verse 24 first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 24 you are going to read this for yourself and where you see you you put me one two three go say that with assurance tonight say it for the third time something has happened already faithfully see that call it you he also will do it now isaiah chapter 65 Isaiah chapter 65, and we're reading from verse 24. Isaiah chapter 65, we're reading from verse, uh, from verse 24. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. Tonight, tonight, and it shall come to pass. In your life today, and it shall come to pass. That before the call i will answer and while they are yet speaking i will hear favor tonight abundance tonight miracles tonight signs and wonders tonight and the, the remarkable manifestation of the power of god in your life tonight in jesus name this is the moment now it shall come to pass that before they call i will answer and while they're yet speaking i will hear it shall come to pass somebody there it shall come to pass say it say it that before i call he will answer and while i am yet speaking he will hear 
again and it shall come to pass that before I call he will answer and while I am yet speaking he will hear say it now yourself verse 24 1 2 3 go And somebody said, Amen. Amen. Rise up and have a confirmation tonight. Rise up and have a confirmation tonight. Because it will happen. It will happen. It shall come to pass. Say something. Move that mountain. Speak to that mountain. Speak to that problem. It has come to pass. It has come to pass. And tonight is that night. Tonight is the night of remarkable manifestation of divine favor upon your life. Upon your life. Upon your life. You came here for something. You'll get more than you came for. For. You'll get more than you came for. You'll get more than you came for. Power, miracle, anointing, authority is there tonight. While you're yet speaking, while you're yet speaking, while you're yet speaking, he will hear. He will hear. He will hear. And while even before you talk and before you open your mouth, answer is coming from heaven. Answer is coming from heaven. And so it's coming from heaven. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Don't halt between two opinions. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. He's the eternal one. He's the mighty one. He's the omnipotent one. He's the one that cannot fail. As he said, I shall he not do it. As he spoke here, shall he not bring it to pass? Is this not the day of your miracle? Is this not the day of your power? Is this not the day of remarkable manifestation? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. It is. It's the day of the supernatural. It's the day of great power. It's the great day of great outpouring. The famine will vanish away. The drought will vanish away. The scarcity will vanish away. The poverty will vanish away. It's a day of abundance. It's a day of a mighty rain. It's a day of a great rain. A day of miracle. A day of power. A day of anointing. Anointing that breaks every yoke. While you are yet speaking, while you are yet speaking, he will hear. He will hear. He will answer. Pray with assurance, he will answer. Even Ahab believed the words of the prophet Elijah. Go up and eat. Wipe away the tears. Wipe away the sorrow. Take away all the doubt. Take away all the palpitation of the heart. Take away all the unbelief. Tonight, tonight, tonight. Answered prayer tonight. Manifestation tonight. Fulfillment tonight. That's right. Coming your way. That's right, it's coming your way. Right there, right there, right there. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Point to that problem. Identify that problem. It's going tonight. It's rolled away tonight. A curable disease. Healed tonight. Joblessness taken away tonight. Barrenness taken away tonight. Tears wiped away tonight. It shall come to pass. In your life, it must come to pass tonight. In your family, it must come to pass tonight. 
remarkable manifestation remarkable performance remarkable answer to your prayer remarkable miracle unforgettable spectacular what he's going to do tonight It's a night of answered prayer. It's a night of manifestation. A night of joy. A night of praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. A night of refreshing. A night of moving every mountain. He says, I'll show you great and mighty things which you didn't know. There's a confirmation to every prayer you pray tonight. Every demand you make tonight, there's a confirmation. Ask, it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Faithfully see that call it you, who also will do it. Faithful, dependable, trustworthy. You see what's called you who also will do it tonight. Performance tonight. Manifestation tonight. Answers to a prayer tonight. Assurance tonight. Abundance tonight. He cannot fail. He has pledged the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus and the word of assurance from Jesus. Whatsoever you ask in my name that I will do. whatsoever spiritual material physical domestic professional whatsoever you're asking tonight there is a performance the fire came down Immediately, Elijah prayed. And the miracle comes down tonight. With assurance. Manifestation tonight. You're praying to the God that cannot fail. Praying to the God that cannot fail. Expecting the miracle from the God that cannot fail.
Move that mountain. Command that evil sea to depart. It has to. Don't leave any stone unturned. Everything that should not be in your life must get out today. Failure out. Defeat out. Sickness out. Oppression out. Poverty out. Joblessness out, barrenness out. He staggered not at the promise of God. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. Fully persuaded that what he had promised is able also to perform. See yourself as a favorite of God tonight. And he shows favor on his favorite. Know yourself as a favorite of God tonight. And he shows favor to his favorite. You know he will not fail. You know he cannot fail. You know your prayers are answered tonight. You know you have got what you are asking tonight. Heaven and earth may pass away, but his word shall not pass away. Miracle upon your life. Answered prayer, your portion tonight. Those chains are broken, the fetters are broken. The cords tying you in any way, broken, curse taken away, yokes destroyed.
In Jesus' name we pray. God has answered my prayer. God has answered my prayer. That's a manifestation in my life tonight. That's a miracle in my life tonight. Joy has come to my life. Assurance in my life. Somebody there has a miracle. What is he? What is she? A confirmation in your life in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, you are the God who answers prayer. You will never disappoint any of your people. And all the people who are here tonight, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, Lord, I pray there will be a definite transformation, a definite miracle, a definite manifestation in every life here tonight in Jesus' name. Everything they have mentioned in prayer, Lord, I pray, give it to them in Jesus' name. That mountain the side will move, oh Lord, we agree together. That mountain come out in Jesus' name. All that occasional, perennial problem, it will come now, go, it will come now and go. Lord, I pray tonight will be the final end. Set your people free. Break every yoke in their lives. And Lord, I pray you grant everyone breakthrough in Jesus' name. Bring open doors before everyone. Lord, I pray poverty to go. Joblessness to go. Barrenness to go. That farming locally there in their personal life, take the farming away in Jesus' name. Provision for every family. Abundance for every family. All the tears you wipe away. And I pray, Lord, every definite sin that has been asked of you concerning anyone here, confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Sickness will not go home with anyone. Sickness, whatever the name, Sickness, whatever the description, sickness, however long you have been there, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Attack, affliction, oppression, demonic power, come out in Jesus' name. I pray you turn their sorrow to joy. Wipe their tears away. Big joy and laughter in every heart. And I pray miracle for everyone. On my right, in front of me there, by my left, at the gallery, for every single person, Lord. Miracle confirmation in Jesus' name. Thank you lord for tonight we want to thank you for bringing us here and for those who are still on you will have your way in our lives in jesus name thank you lord because you know you've answered for in jesus name we've prayed lord prepare me our sanctuary pure and holy Kind and true, we thanksgiving 
I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Yes, for you. Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living. Yes, for you, Lord, prepare me. Tried and true. Sanctuary for just obey, just obey is the way. God's way, when His message comes to you, there is but one thing to do, just obey. 